and hi everyone, I'm Shi Jing from Tsinghua University. Um, today I'm going to introduce our uh, paper. In this research, uh, I will investigate the limitation of existing IO-based ransomware detectors and propose an imitation-based attack to help them improve their uh, detection capabilities. And the life cycle of ransomware attacks can be generalized into uh, four steps. Uh, infection, communication, destruction, and extortion. And existing detection techniques tend to prevent ransomware attacks in the destruction step because it is where uh, the malicious action actually happened. And it is also a very special step different uh, from other kinds of malware. Uh, a common detection method is to extend if, if uh, the I.O. behaviors of each running program match a, a malicious I.O. pattern. Detection, uh, developers, uh, detection app developers often observe runtime behaviors of some uh, ransomware samples so that they can conclude some malicious I.O. patterns and apply these patterns to their uh, detectors. So uh, their basic assumption is that uh, ransomware behaves very differently from the night program uh, regarding their detection patterns. So uh, they can easily uh, design a classifier to distinguish ransomware's behavior. And many detectors based on this assumption report an almost 100% defend the detection uh, success rate, meaning that they can defend almost all of ransomware samples. So uh, this research, uh, in this paper, we aim to investigate if those uh, IO-based ransomware detectors are truly effective. We want to know if their uh, detection strategies can be bypassed, uh, which means that uh, under the protection of their strategies, we want to know if a program can successfully encrypt files and we are be being detected by these detectors. And so we propose an uh, imitation based ransomware attack to challenge these detectors. If they cannot detect such kind of attack, and then we find a, a counter example, which is able to help them realize their limitations and improve their detection capabilities. And the idea of our proposed method is very simple. It imitates behaviors of benign programs to discuss its encryption tasks. So uh, obviously, they, uh, it has two uh, main phases, uh, the offline preparation phase and the online attack phase. Uh, during the offline preparation phase, it learns uh, behavior patterns from a benign program. And this, pro this, this benign program can be any program as long as it has a, a rich IO, uh, IO behaviors. And for example, uh, web browsers, uh, we can use web browsers, uh, file compressors, and program compilers. Uh, we run these denied programs and collect the behaviors and produce a, a behavior template. And during the online attack, and guided by this behavior template, the attack, the attack program orchestrate trial process to encrypt files uh, in this way. Uh, our, our program can, our attack program can achieve its uh, encryption goal and behave similar to its uh, benign, to this deny program. And I will detail these two phases one by one. And the first is the uh, offline preparation phase. And during this phase, uh, our focus is on gathering the runtime behavior of a deny program. Specifically, uh, we want to determine how and when a program of uh, a process of this program access to a file, like uh, how this access uh, how this proce process open a file, how many bytes it reads from a file, how many bytes it write to a file, and besides, we also analyze uh, if the access pattern of a specific file can uh, match some. Uh, exploitable patterns. Uh, uh, in this example, uh, this file, uh, the access pattern of this file uh, is uh, match, matches a, a, a right after read pattern. So uh, 
After this, we can obtain a behavior template after this phase. And next, we uh, introduce the online attack phase. And in this phase, uh, our program imitates the collective behavior template and schedule its, its trial processes to behave in a similar way as the, uh, as the imitated program. One difference, one main difference thing is that uh, our attack program will replace a part of file in the template uh, with the actual file that needs to be that needs to be uh, encrypted in the victim systems. So uh, some some write operations are replaced with malicious operations, uh, such as writing encrypted buffers into uh, files. And let's take an example. And when our program imitates a browser like Firefox, uh, our program behaves very similar to Firefox. However, uh, Firefox may write to some files to record logs and, or store or store cookies. And in this and in this example, Firefox uh, writes to a file called BWE dot circle, and uh, our program will replace such kind of uh, write write operations with our malicious operations, such as uh, writing encrypted buffer into uh, the files in the uh, victim systems. In this example, is the uh, file or uh, is this PPT uh, file? And in this way, our attack program in implants some encryption behaviors into the benign program, the, into the benign behaviors. And for evaluation, uh, we implement this attack and we call our prototype as uh, animals. And we evaluated its effectiveness against six well-known ransomware detectors including three uh, industrial tools uh, like Kaspersky, 3NCST, and uh, Windows Defender, and also three academic tools uh, like Unreal, Redemption, and SharpFS. And from the table, we can see, despite the detection effectiveness of these tools against uh, existing ransomware families, our attack program it, uh, is still able to evade these this, uh, detection tools. And this result shows that uh, our prototype can effectively provide counter examples for these ransomware detection techniques. And we also evaluate its uh, attack throughput. We use our program to imitate many kinds of programs including uh, web browsers like uh, Firefox, Chrome, uh, document editors like uh, Microsoft Office, and file compressors like Qzip, and uh, compilers like uh, Rust-C and Golang. And we compare the encryption time spent by uh, different imitation versions of our programs to the time spent by uh, traditional ransomware samples. And in this figure, the x axis is the number of uh, encrypted files, and the y axis is the time for encryption. And from the figure, we can see uh, our, attack, our attack program does not take much longer time than traditional ransomware samples. And uh, basically, they spend almost the same time to encrypt the same uh, number of files. And we also conduct a lot of experiments to evaluate the uh, robustness of this attack uh, against defense. We implement many kinds of uh, t detection strategies, such as file type-based detector, which determine ransomware by uh, observing the file type assessed by each running program, and also sc scanning based detector, which uh, determines ransomware by observing the uh, directory scanning behavior of each running program. 
And in the paper, we present a lot of experimental results, but due to the time limitations, we will only show the uh, overall results uh, for this presentation. And the overall results shows that uh, simple detection strategies cannot effectively detect, detect this attack without incurring a, a considerable false positive rate. And this means that uh, our attack cannot be simply detected and designing a practical detection strategy for this attack is, is non-trivial. It may require many uh, manual efforts in uh, feature engineering. So uh, the prototype of this tool is released at this Hita repository today. And Windows of ransomware detectors can use this prototype uh, to conduct feature engineering and so, so that they can improve their proposed uh, strategies. And to sum up, the goal of this research is to reveal the limitations of ransomware detectors and it learns behaviors from denied programs to discuss its encryption tasks. And our evaluation shows this attack can effectively evade existing detectors. And our prototype is available and can be helpful for improving uh, their detection capabilities. So uh, that's all. Thank you for watching. And all right, let's thank our speaker. So I guess we have time for one or two quick questions. Uh, we can maybe already have the next speaker come up on the stage to prepare um, while people are still making their way to the microphone. Um, let me ask a constructive question. Maybe I can... Do you see me now? Okay. Um, does it make... Like, you showed that the detectors at the moment don't work and you showed that simple uh, fixes also don't work. Do you have any ideas of how to overcome your attack? Uh, sure, and I think a uh, detect such kind of attack should uh, combine all types of uh, detection uh, methods, not only the not not only the uh, IO based detec detection, but also some uh, detection for detecting the uh, uh, malicious behavior of. Uh, Somewhere else in the uh, communication phase and the infection phase. And for example, uh, if we can detect the, uh, it, it communicates with the CMC server and then we can see it's a malicious uh, program, so we can detect it. Uh, so not only, not, not only the IO based detect, mm -hmm. detectors, but also others uh, detect, other detect, detect, detection approach. All right. Yep. Cool. Thank you very much. And if there are no more questions in this room, then let's thank our speaker again.